just to uh, talk to you a little about uh, another subject in, in uh, high school, this time around English language. Okay. Did you enjoy learning English language in high school? Yes, um, it was, it, I, I did, I did, because um, it was one of those um, subject areas where, um, that I didn't have a lot of difficulties mm. with, you know. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. Now, when you say you didn't have a lot of difficulties, what, uh, what made it easier for you? Because it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it seemed very straightforward, right? It's straightforward, you have, um, especially for literature, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like literature, right. you, you read and um, you could try to memorize a lot of stuff, but, but the stories were interesting, right? Um, so that was also good. The, you know, the issues that are probably, well, before I get to that, um, you know, you get to read some of that, um, Shakespeare, read a lot of Shakespeare. Right. Um, some of those old English novels, um, they were a little bit challenging, but for the most part it was, it was pretty straightforward. It wasn't as complex as mathematics, where mm -hmm. you need a formula to be able to decipher what the answer is. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was, it was um, pretty, relative to mathematics, it was right. straightforward. Now, for you, did you speak English at home? Um, uh, for, for a long period of time. Um, my mom, at, when we were growing up, at least, well, when we were in primary school, there was a pe for period of time, and it, and it, oops, an extended period of time when she insisted that we speak English at home. Mm. Um, by high school, um, no, we're not. I think we're probably we're violating those rules by then. <laughs> yeah, but um, my um, primary school, we had um, the the rule was English. You know, even outside the class school. Mm -hmm. um, so I had opportunities at least to practice. You know, um, <clears throat> even before going to high school. Mm. So. Again here, getting more specific, mm -hmm. uh, do you remember any specific topic or area of English mm -hmm. that you would say was particularly easier for you to grasp? I liked, um, uh, I did not necessarily, well, well, let me start with stuff that was a little bit more difficult for me to grasp. Yeah. Right. Um, poetry was ah. much difficult for me to, uh, to, to, to grasp than um, um, literature, general literature, mm -hmm. right? Especially, um, because poetry always it was it was always mysterious because you read the poems right <laughs> and you think they mean one thing and then the teacher comes and he tells you something totally different mm. right um, so um, compared to um, poetry um, like um, my my a lot of the drama and the Shakespearean plays and mm -hmm. some of the the, the novels the novels, were, exactly right. they were very pretty straightforward but easier to grasp so so you're saying that. Uh, mm -hmm. In, in a case where in poetry you have to essentially come up with a specific or a one-track interpretation, it became a little tougher to handle that. Just like mathematics are really hard. Exactly. Yeah, but you see, the, the thing about poetry though is yeah, you begin to realize that yes, mm -hmm. you have to come up with an interpretation of what right. the poet is trying to say. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, even when you think you've come up with the right interpretation, the teacher comes on and says, no, that's not, that's not what it was. Exactly. Then he comes up with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. no. So that was um, a little mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so that's the tough one. What's the, so the easiest one is the novel. The, the novel, um, especially stuff that had to do with reading comprehension. You read mm. the whole thing and then you have to answer questions. That was mm. that was pretty pretty straightforward. A little bit easier for you. Yes. Me. What about summarization? Summarization was um, it was not difficult at all. It was not difficult. It, it at least for me it came. It wasn't that difficult. It was just a matter of looking for perhaps one or two key sentences mm. that, and basically just building up, you know, trying to ensure that what you, what you end up writing will capture as many, you know, variations of the story as possible, mm. right? In a short in amount of time. Exactly, right. you know. Um, so it wasn't that difficult. Essay writing. Essay writing, I had, um, it was, it was, essay writing was, Original. I thought it was going to be easy. I had some challenges with essay writing, essay writing um, initially. I think, especially in my early high school years, mm -hmm. because there, I had some spelling issues, right, mm -hmm. um, with um, words that had an e i or i e and that kind of stuff. You know, the, the switching of one exactly one or the other. Mm -hmm. And some t and I know another thing that I had um, another difficulty that I had with. With my essays was that I always tried to finish very very quickly, mm. right? So I did not spend time to 
the grid and all to basically read over myself. my stuff and edit it. So, yeah. so that was my that was uh, um, what was challenging about writing essays. Mm. But besides that, I all you know, to come up with ideas to use to basically write an essay on, and didn't have a problem with it. It was just mm. the mechanics of writing the essay, writing the essay too. that um, I had I initially struggled with. I see. Let's talk about your English teacher. Do you have any recollection of uh, <sighs> the experience with your teacher in English? Um, vaguely, I know that um, in high school we had Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams was was a very good teacher. Mm. Um, however, she, she used to flog us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... Wait, um, but I thought flogging was supposed to make you better in class. <laughs> Well, she, she was she was she was our English teacher and she was also our form teacher, Ooh. right? So she would teach English when it was time for English, uh -huh. but for every other time, you know, when people were talking too much or whatnot, you know, I was guilty of that. You know, right. yeah, she she yeah, she used to punish. She, she comes up with the yes, with the uh, with the whip. Yes, but otherwise otherwise she was good. We also I also had um, um, another teacher in my and for one his name was um, um, Mr. Sil John. Um, oh. He ended up dying much later after mm. that year, but he was he, he was he was he was one of those guys that leaves an impression in you, right? Because mm. he was he was so dramatic. He, he brought the stuff to life, right? Mm. So so it was it was it was everybody loved everybody loved his classes because he sounded very much like a very good preacher, you know. Mm. That you almost you almost mesmerized by you know by he's the exactly voice. the sound of his voice and the way he. He tells the story and makes the story kind of apply to your situation. Mm. It was a very good guy. Interesting. Do you have any recollection of your textbook? Oh, uh, my yeah. textbook. Um, I remember. Um, I remember. Yeah, I remember some of the some of the some, some of the textbooks that we did. Mm -hmm. We did. Um, uh, we did. Um, some some of the um, African novels. Um, ah. So long the letter by right. Miriam Bars, mm -hmm. um, some of the um, 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 some Chino um, uh, no. books. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also I also remember some of the um, um, the Shakespearean plays that we actually mm -hmm. read. Right. Exactly. Right. So uh, Macbeth, definitely I remember right. that. Coriolanus, etc. Yeah. Wow, you were Coriolanus in high school. Yeah, uh, well, Coriolanus was in uh, form six. Ah, okay, yeah. because that, that's where I read it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh -huh. right. Okay, so um, let's talk about how you walked your way around the tough areas in English. Okay. Uh, enough to pass WAIC when it was time for you to write yeah. WAIC at the end of the, of the day. So, do you have any recollection about what you had to do? Good. To make it work? Um, with um, with WAIC, I also ended up having a tutor who was uh, also in English. English. Yeah, in English, who was also an examiner that my mom knew. Ah. Who um, um, hmm. she ended up being. She was also a relative. So and she mm -hmm. also had. Um, she all. She she was a high school teacher in one of the public school systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know back you know things were getting bad, and so she had her own private lessons that she had. Mm -hmm. So I went to her uh, lessons, mm -hmm. and one one of the things that she did that I think was very important was focusing on you know she had the syllabus, mm -hmm. the specific thing we were supposed to to do and learn and she ensure that most of what we studied or what we learned during those lessons were basically straight from syllabus. Yeah, consistent with the syllabus. Consistent with the syllabus, yes. So, mm -hmm. um, I think that was very helpful, very helpful in terms of, you know, again, answering, you know, past exams mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So that was good. She was very good with that. Mm -hmm. it, we're talking about private lessons for the second time. Mm -hmm. So it crosses my mind then to ask you, mm -hmm. How accessible would you say you know this resource was uh, to a lot of young people of your age at the time? <laughs> Very good question. Um, one of the things that I definitely recall is that there were a lot of private lessons. However, the quality of the private lessons varied vary mm -hmm. on how much you could afford. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so there were um, a lot of people who had access to private lessons that were being conducted in um, a school called model, model schools. It's mm. one of the public schools in, in right. Freetown. They had a mm. large syndicate where they offered private lessons with different teachers. Right. Uh, <clears throat> those, I, in fact, I went to one of those lessons for I don't remember some something. I, I think for history. Mm. Um, but also, so those were good. Those were cheaper. Um, but then, um, the, the people who you 
who were considered to, or who were seen as the best teachers, mm. right, whether it's math, physics, French, or English. Um, they had their own personal stuff, personal mm. lessons, right? Mm. The, um, the private tutor, the tu tu tutoring that was available in model school, uh, it was, um, people paid to an organization and the organization mm. ended up paying up the teachers. The teachers. Okay. With these great teachers, like the Mrs. Gosme, so the master know, teacher. Exactly. It was their own thing. Private enterprise. Exactly. Private enterprise. We pay them and they provide services. Mm. So they cost a little bit more. And in that sense, it was not necessarily accessible to everybody else. So you would say the reputation that they had over time with a lot of kids passing. Oh yeah, oh yes. Also enhanced. Oh yes, yeah. The like, ability to exactly, and, and the, 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 the reputation ends up again leading me to what we call selection, right? So mm -hmm. she ends up, she she has this. Uh, she ends up teaching people who end up passing and having the best results. Mm. Then the kids who are the smart kids who would end up having the best results anyway would end up going to, her. Go to her. Exactly, because she, you know, of course of that history. Right? So, mm. so, so that was what happened. Right. Now, again, th this is the point where I get to ask you, of all the resources that we've talked about, if I were to ask you to rank order and tell me which is the single most important mm -hmm. contributor to your success oh, wow. in English language as a subject in, in, in high school, which factor would that be? In this particular case, um, I think it, it was both probably, well, the teacher was good, so that, that that's, that, there's no doubt about it, she was mm -hmm. very good. But I think it's, it's the process of answering past questions, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and uh, that process occurred mainly again through the lessons that she was conducting. Mm. So it was that specific strategy, you know, and getting a sense of what um, examiners were looking Expect. for, expected, exactly. So um, it's one thing to have the information. Exactly. Another thing to, to understand the technicality of answering the question. Exactly. You know, with, with, with math, if you know the formulas, you know the process, you know the principles, the, 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 you could solve almost all, every problem, mm -hmm. right? With, with English, it was it was quite different. You mm -hmm. know, again, going back to Portier, right. you know, what I was referring right. to, right. you can't just write what was what's the first thing that comes to mind. You had mm -hmm. to understand, you know, what, you know, all the different, you know, the, the, the nuances things. of the exactly point. the nuances of the poem, right. you know, and the intricacies of you know mm -hmm. all the different, you know, figures of speech that were being right. used in the poems. Right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, any advice? for young people now in West Africa who are going through this same stage that uh, you know, we're just talking about, what should they do? How should they prepare? Um, in, in, in West Africa, especially for English-speaking countries, I think there is, um, there is a tendency for us, I'm speaking specifically for people in Sierra Leone, right? mm -hmm. for us to, um, because we speak a lot of broken English, mm -hmm. you know, patois, or you know, pidgin English, or whatever, right. There's a tendency for us to assume that you know that exposure, that rudimentary exposure to e English carries over in terms of uh, formal English, mm. um, um, the study of formal English as right. a subject, right? right. And, and that could um, that could end up hurting us, right? So, uh, um, so what I would advise people, especially people who live in contexts where you have um, these um, languages spoken in Sierra Leone, Ghana, Nigeria, is mm -hmm. to be very, very particular and very, very deliberate in exposing yourself to proper English, right? It might be through, uh, well, when I was growing up, we had opportunities to go to the British Council Library, we would listen to um, um, BBC News, mm -hmm. right? We didn't have TV stations were not working that much in Sierra Leone, so B British Council was a place to go at six o'clock in the evening. BBC News will be play broadcasted in a hall, you know, you go to the American Embassy, they mm -hmm. had um, Voice of America. Voice of America, you know, and that kind of stuff. And also try as best as possible to you know at least in terms of speaking and writing. Mm. You know, don't um, don't get dis well, don't get discouraged by perhaps your inability to at least get it right the first time. You know, another thing that is a challenge um, for people studying English, at least when I was growing up, was you know um, the the fear of you know speaking broken English or bad English and having mm -hmm. all your friends laugh at you. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I think we shouldn't allow that to discourage us and um, prevent us from speaking English, making attempts to speak English. 
And um, also, um, we shouldn't allow that to you know, prevent us from writing as, as, as often as possible. Mm. Now we have access to emails, right? Um, most people have access to emails, uh, text, me well, text messages, and the latest technology. Try as best as possible when you're using those um, means of communication to, you know, don't use the shortcuts, right? Mm. It's easy to find the little abbreviated abbreviations for certain words. Try to write it out, you know. Perhaps in, if you respond to somebody in email, try to perhaps write a few more additional sentences. You know, this so is proper, English. proper English, you know, perhaps add a little extra paragraph. Mm -hmm. So you get you get some, some some practice in terms of how to use the English language. And of course you always want to pay attention to you know the specific books mm -hmm. that you're required to study, you know, at least in terms of what is required for the exams. Mm -hmm. Good advice all the way through. Thank Good you advice. so much for your time. You're welcome. Really appreciate talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to add to what you just said, just reminded me of a question. So, uh, with regards to the young adults that are growing up preparing for exams, mm -hmm. they'll probably say, Professor Thomas made it because his mother was there, oh, wow. she had all the resources. <laughs> Well, it's we don't true. have that resources. How do you, do you, do you yeah. And yeah. they say, I keep practice, and I don't get it. What would you tell them? Um, good. So the the, the 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 resource argument is one that is unavoidable. In my case, you could you, you could see yes, there was a resource part of that, right? Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of things that you could do that resources can't do, right? And right. particularly with regard to having, you no. Know, Having the motivation to study, right, and practice, right, there were um, subjects that I did not necessarily have um, as much exposure to private tutoring that I had to actually stay up all night to actually read mm -hmm. and study, right? The, on my own. On my own, exactly. Um, so that stuff is stuff that you could do regardless of whether you have resources or not. You know, burning the midnight oil, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things I used to do is going to the library. Right, so right. for stuff like um, economics or ge geography or history, you know, going to the library and not only reading the books, but also one of the things I discovered then is, you know, that, you know, if I write, I summarize what I was reading if from the library, the library was free, you know, if I summarize and I wrote it down, it stuck with me much longer. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, that was a skill I, well, that was a strategy I used for almost every other, every other subject that involved a lot of reproducing what the concepts were. Right. But it might not necessarily work for math or English, but stuff like history, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that kind of stuff, you know, I found out that going to the library, writing stuff, I had pages of my own notes, right. right? That stuff always stuck with me. That is something that you could do without resources and you probably will still have some of the same results. I mean, so, so the argument you're making mm -hmm. is having a mom who motivates you, mm -hmm. it's only, you know, like oh, so yes, yeah, yeah, so Now, the, your mom could still go to the library and you don't end up at the library. That is correct. Uh, and, you know, so as, as useful as that is, you know, we, we shouldn't discount it. That's true. Uh, but what you're saying is parents, I mean, kids who don't have parents who are able to motivate them can self-motivate. They can self-motivate. They can self-motivate because really, when it comes down to it, you know, this is about your own future, right? Nobody should care about your future more than, you, more do. than you do. Exactly. Right. And another thing that also helped in terms of you know, developing the motivation is, you know, being very deliberate in terms of the friends that you hang around. You know, in every school, in almost every class, mm. there's always one or two students who seem to know what they're doing. Right. Perhaps it might be a good idea to perhaps, you know, hang around those kids, you know. And, you and know, they tend not to be the popular kids. They, oh, they tend not to be the popular kids. Right. They tend not to be the popular kids, right? right? And um, that helps. It helps in terms of keeping your own motivation up. And mm. don't be afraid to ask. Oh, yes, don't yes. be afraid, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. All right.